So today we're gonna fish, but we're also gonna do uh, a little carne asada. So carne asada is like uh, the backyard barbecue. Hey, how's it going? Back again. I think we're gonna do a, a quart of shrimp and then I uh, need to buy a bait bucket for some croaker. But the croaker are very high maintenance, so unless you have an aerator, they're, they're so then, quick, you don't have a So then, so then should we put the croaker in that and then do the shrimp in that? You may. Really? Croaker are high maintenance. Yeah. They are? Okay, so the, yeah, I guess let's do croaker in there and then we'll do the shrimp in there. And okay. I guess we just do one of these. That way we can have it for, that's a good bucket size too. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll do this and then do one of these. These just take the... Those are the D batteries, the mini ones on the left and the green boxes take double A. Okay, and does this have the little yeah, aerator? The and tube and the, everything in there? Okay. And the ball. Okay. It does not come with batteries though. Okay. And you said these are D? Yes. Okay. I think we have D outside in so our How gear. much croaker did you want? Uh, what do they sell them by the dozen? $12 a dozen. Okay. I'll take a dozen and then I'll take a quart of so uh, which shrimp. So do you want? Uh, we'll here? do, uh, you think croaker would be okay in here? They'll yeah. be in okay either or. Both okay. Both yeah. will be fine either or. Okay. Let's just do shrimp in there and then croaker in there. Yeah. Yeah, we came here last time. Uh, last time we got a quart of, of shrimp, but uh, but man, I, I really hope that croaker do well because, dude, that would be awesome. Oh, so the guy told you croaker yeah. for the trout? Yeah, I was watching the videos too, like. And that's what you're trying to get trout? The, not just the regular size trout, like the big trout. Those, those run more on. Yeah, I mean, they're, but they, they, they call them the well, head shakers. Mind, you say you're an expert, let's we'll see it. I mean, those, they have a, they have a different type of, like, it's like a different type of bite. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Like that guy, the guy left leaves it open yeah, to let him take it, and then he closes and hooks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's called Vast Overland, like V is in Victor. Vast. Yeah, V is in Victor. A S T. She's gonna go check it out. Overland. <laughs> gotta go check it out. Overland. Yeah, that's the YouTube channel. Yeah, you're actually right at the start of the video because that's where we started the oh, video okay. <laughs> last time. What can I get you? Are you trying out a different spot today? We're going to try there at the boat ramp. At that, uh, I guess you're going to go back and then go down. There's a boat ramp there with yeah. a concrete. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys messaged me. He's like, hey, right there, just go out there and try for specs there. Is that the Bayfront area? Yeah, yeah. You got any other suggestions? No. <laughs> I know Olivia is where Laura, our employee, she's, she fishes all the time. Every, every time they go to Olivia, she, they always catch fish. Olivia? Is it a town or is it? It's, you know, if you go over the bridge, that's Point Comfort. Yeah. If you go through the light, a little ways down on your right, 
there's going to be a right. It's like a little bridge, and you turn right. That's, you'll see a sign that says Olivia. If you go all the way down to a stop sign and take a right, it leads you straight to the water. But there's actually a little dirt road right before you get to, it kind of looks like the bayfront here. Okay. It's a little area with the boat ramp, but right before you get there is a left. It's like a dirt road. A lot of people go down there. You can even walk to a little island. You'll see people wade fishing there all the time, but she catches fish. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. We might have to try that. Yep. Hit, hit that on the way back. Cause... I don't fish enough to know anything. Oh. We went last Sunday and didn't catch nothing. Where'd y'all go? We went to the beach. We went out to Six Mile. All we caught was a huge um, gap top. Oh, yeah. It... Yeah, we got lucky last time. We got a uh, little, couple little specks, little sand trout, uh, croaker, but then we hooked into that big, uh, big red dr uh, black drum, and that was fun. They, even further, you know where Indian Ola Fishing Marina? Is? I heard about that. Yes, they've been catching big uh, redfish there. Really? The bull reds. Yeah. They were posting them this week on Facebook. Wow. Perfect. Thank you so much. You guys want to grab that all right thank you have a good one or she said that the croaker are real they're real hard to keep um you got to keep them aerated so that's so why i just went ahead and bought i didn't have another aerator and bucket but we can always use a bucket so Close. Let's see. Oh, there's a, there it is. All right. You ready? Hey, is the water supposed to be this calm? It's, dude, it's, it's not gonna be like this for long. It's only gonna be like this till nine or 10. But you know, we're, we're, we're also protected. <whistles> Bro, it's some big old croaker though, man. Yeah? Those are big old croaker. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, oh, you ain't have a setup at all, huh? Mm -hmm. You don't have a setup at all, huh? Huh? No, all I gotta do is hook one of these little things in there. Are you gonna use a bobber or no? No. Hey, the bobber? You can use it. He has he has other bobbers too, right, boss? What? You have bobbers? Yeah. This one? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we'll put a croak. When we'll put a. Oh, you got those? You picked up those? Come on, he boss. He told you about look, those. Look at these. Come on, boss. He told me he sent me up. Our boy at um. At English Anonymous. English, Rich. Shout Richard. Out to English Anonymous. I, I don't I don't remember the guy's name, Richard. but this guy was so helpful. He helped me get a starter pack for first time fishermen. Look um, at that. It's gonna be on. I need to get a little weight. Uh, I'll be all right. Yeah, it, so you're going to be free. Uh, yeah. Free line in the croaker. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me look at this real quick. This, this little piece right here. I didn't like how that was sitting. Looks like it's kind of coming out. There we go. So now just get the croaker and we're gonna hook them through the back and you're just gonna put them out there. And then, and just look at that. That's all you're gonna do, like that. Yeah, so look, and the, you're gonna hook them when you hook him. Yeah, he, bro, he already knows. He says he does. I'm gonna use one of these. What's this? I don't know, the guy gave it to me. Yeah, so this is a Carolina rig. Yeah. Should man, I this it? is nice, man. You sure you want to use it?
Hey, Carlo, here's a little rag for you. If you want to put it somewhere, you can set it back here or whatever. That way, at least you can get to it and, and wipe your hands whenever you need to. And I, I put them on like that, like like we did last time? Yeah. Like the dead ones? No, 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 no. So this one, you hook, look. So look, you can hook it. So this one you're gonna hook. That's a big old treble, but it should be fine. Look, you got the black part and you got the horn. You're gonna hook it between. Between the black part yeah, and the horn? That way you don't kill him. You hook him through the black part, you're gonna kill him. So calm here, huh? It's so calm. Oh, here's just the traffic going by. Honestly, I've been fishing it forever. Yo, there's big fish. I just saw it was it was chasing it, and I felt the nibble, so I pulled. But there's big fish. I just saw it with my own eyes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. See, they're right. They're on here. They're right here on the edge. They usually, they usually, these fish usually stay by the, the grass, the grass and all that. Me llamo Carlo Alejandro Villarreal. Definitely a success. Having a, a loving family to come home to. That's it. Some people, I mean, nah, like most people, I mean, their success is money now. Nah. So other things more than money. Just having family, friends, like you said it yourself in the car. When you die, you want you want people to to say, "Oh, hey, you know that guy was part of my life, or he helped me change it, or something, or he he was he I mean he was a good part of my life." I guess you know that's what you want. Friends, family. Hate to die alone, you know. I grew up like also says I grew up in a in a more um, white neighborhood. You would say white neighborhood. You know, I didn't grow up around a lot of Hispanics, so that's how I met also in a bunch of our crew. A bunch of our crew, because I played football, man. He's, uh, he, went, he played Katie, uh, Katie High School. He was on a, a state champion. Oh, yeah? You are a state champion? No, we lost our year. <laughs> we went to the state. We lost, though. Yeah, man, just grew up, you know? Grew up. Yeah, I play football. I play football. I skateboarded. Yeah, believe it or not, I used to skateboard. I used to BMX. I used to be all into the BMX and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I, I think I live a typical, typical life. But you were a good kid, though, right? You know? Yeah, I was very honestly growing up. I was very, very good. I was very good, disciplined. I was. I used. I used to be an ROTC too. Like I, I don't know. For some reason, I like that that military style of of living. And I don't know. I I, I used to fa it used to fascinate me as a kid. But as I grew older, man, just I don't know what happened. Just didn't do it no more. You know, I like I went I went through ROTC through football. You know, you know footballs. That's a. I'm gonna go put a live bay. You know, you know, football is very disciplined. Every, very. I don't know if you play football. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like wrestling, um, constant practices, stuff like that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't play soccer. I didn't really have a lot of Hispanic friends growing up. That's also him and him and his buddies, my friends, my first Hispanic friends. Really. I'll put that in before you. <laughs> <laughs> Went to school. Mom was a mom. Mom's a teacher, so you know, went to school for a little bit. Tried to do that a little bit. Didn't work out. Just con life continues. I mean, just not the same. I mean, went different ways. Started partying. Discipline. I didn't. I didn't get all that discipline no more. You know, wanted to have fun. I, you know, when you when you do something for so long, you're told this is the right way and. You know, you, you just do what people, you know, people tell you to do. You don't have fun. I mean, my my parents, 
if you mind my family, they're very cut edge, straight edge, you know. So like you talk anything about alcohol stuff like that, they don't. I mean, they don't like they don't like you getting drunk and you don't like you doing stuff like that. So you know, they didn't really approve of my friends. I wouldn't. I would assume, but I mean, they stuck around. So those are my friends. You know? Went to college, found out it wasn't for me. I mean, I was just trying to please everyone in my family. You know, just. Like what most what most kids do when they're 18, trying to trying to please someone, trying to please someone in the family, do this. You know, it's the only way. And like you said it yourself, people think that college is the only way to do something. It's not. There's, there's different other jobs that you can you can do in other ways to make money. But like you said, it's like a, it's like a stepping stone. Stepping, it's like a, a stepping stone in, your, in a, to give you a better life. I, you would say, you know. But you're always gonna be working for somebody. No matter what, and to me that just I don't know I just never felt right, never felt right. You know, just got into the trades, working construction, learning a little bit about everything. From my 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 father does, he used to build houses. He also used to help or why used to help us out sometimes too, building you houses. Call me also and, and, yeah, I told him I was like man, I, I told him I, should, I don't know if they call him Eduardo or also. You know, for like the first like. Probably like seven years of our friendship, he didn't know my real name. Yeah, I didn't know his real name. <laughs> well, I mean, when they call him also, I mean, what am I expecting? Who's, who's Eduardo? Like, oh, that's me. I was like, oh, sh your name was also. Not yet, just learned, learned, uh, learned a lot about the trades with my father, learning how to do all that kind of stuff, and just ventured out on my own. Started doing it on my, on, by myself, or I tried to do it by myself, you know? You know, being self employed is very hard, you know? At least, I mean, at least starting off any business is very hard. Yeah. And here I am now fishing with y'all. What would you say is the most important part about your life? My my wife and my kids, the, they support me with anything that I do. Uh, you know, my family, friends, everybody who supports me are a big part of my life. Dude, you think like maybe it, it took it down for like a good, good minute and then it, it hooked. You think maybe it's the hook? Um, it's just they're just fish are smart. They're not they're not that dumb. <laughs> if not, it would make it so much easier to fish. Look, oh man, they haven't even done anything to him. The, the shrimp. No, no. Yeah. No, I mean he's dead, but but one piece. Couple of little bites, but nothing yet. They do pretty good around here usually. Yeah. The bull reds or specks or. Oh. Oh wow! Just on live bait or uh, yeah. live shrimp. It's nice here. The a guy um, on Facebook told me about this spot, and he said, "Yeah, he says right at the boat dock." And uh, but I didn't know they got. I mean, like we brought a barbecue pit, but didn't know they already got a barbecue pits here. They got restroom here. Uh -huh. We brought the RV because we were like, "Well, I have a restroom." They got a restroom right there. It's like, man, they got table. We brought tables. It was like we didn't even know that they had everything here. So, man. It'd be good if that water moves just to starts moving a little bit, maybe. Yeah. And I, I think they said, they said that these are green lights at night. Yeah. Man. Yeah, they shine right down there. Yeah. Man, that's a killer spot then. Uh huh. They got some good, good fish here. Yeah, there's some big fish in here. Yeah. He said big bull red. Big bull red. Oh look, he's hitting it. He's hitting it. Come on, stay hitting it. He's coming towards me. Nope, there he is, got him. Yeah. Look at that, little sand trout. Little sand trout. All right, little sand trout, that's cool. All right, so we are here at a little boat ramp in uh, 
Port Lavaca. And the cool thing about this boat ramp is they actually have, uh, we were gonna do a carne asada today, basically a, a barbecue uh, while we fish. But they actually got barbecue pits here, have bathrooms, they have uh, little tables. We had brought a table, we got a little bench area. At night, they got a green light. So it's a nice little spot. Uh, I'll share the, uh, the spot uh, on the forum uh, with a link to it. Uh, but so far, it's really nice because it's a calm area where the water's kind of going through here, but it's not so much, uh, so much movement. It's not so busy. So the one thing about it though, it is next to a freeway, uh, next to this freeway. So you can hear the cars going by a lot. So that's the only part about it that's kind of a little bit, uh, you know, you can, you know, hear the cars and stuff. But I think it's gonna be a nice little spot. I actually, uh, one of the guys, I believe his name is William, is the guy on Facebook that told me about the place. He said, hey, go check this out. Um, so we went and grabbed live shrimp. We went and grabbed some croaker. Uh, Carlo's here today with, with Eduardo. And uh, Carlo actually already got a couple hits on the croaker. So uh, he, he's trying all, he's trying different stuff now, but I just caught a little sand trout. So anybody that's seen any other videos, they know I love catching little sand trout. I just like the way they hit. I like catching them, but we do want to try to, we got the croaker so that we can try to get a big speck today, or maybe even a big hook into a big red. Last weekend, we got into a big uh, black drum out there at Magnolia Beach. So. Should be a good day. Uh, we bought the, brought the Sprinter out here because we, we thought we were gonna need a bathroom, but they got bathrooms here. Like, it's really kind of a cool setup uh, what they got around here. Plenty of trash cans, so no reason that anybody should be leaving their trash. Um, but it's a pretty cool place. So we'll see how we do today, and, uh, and we'll find out a little bit about Carlo. Carlo uh, Carlo's kind of a cool guy, and uh, I met him through Eduardo, uh, he's one half of the In La Peda podcast, so uh, he's got some cool stuff. He's uh, he's he's got his own construction business now, so it's kind of neat seeing how he, you know, basically went from construction, you know, in the past, and now he's starting his own company. So, you know, that that's what it is. That's what it's all about. You know, we're we're going into a really good year coming up. Uh, you know, now that we're gonna have the right people in office, so. Uh, should be a should be a good time for business. Nah, I didn't get him. But he didn't get the bait either, so I still got my bait. Oh shoot, yeah he did. Look at that. Bro, look at that. Took the head off. So now what I'll do is since I got the treble, so since I got the treble here, he already got the head, a little sand trout. I'll go ahead and hook it three times. And now when I throw it in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the little shell part off right here. Just like take this little bit of shell off. And all the only reason I'm doing that is because I want him to, when he hits it, let's see if I get it off. Man, hands are too slippery. Anyways, I'm going to try to put it to where when he hits it, now the backside of the little shell's off there. That way when he hits it, I can set the hook easier. See, you see how that water's moving now? It's not, it's not just still. That's better. This guy. You got it. Oh, oh you got, got one. Got a little one. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's a one though. There you go. Look at that little sand trout. <laughs> the same Bro, one. Bro, look at that, Eduardo. <laughs> Man, sand <laughs> trout. Now I'll hook him. Let's see you hook that. Him. Hey, buddy. Relax. <laughs> Give him a little kiss. <laughs> What you think, boss? <laughs> what you think? I think Carlos. <laughs> damn, right now we got one each. Carlos ain't got nothing. I don't know if I should reel it in. It's over there, you see it over there? By the rocks? Yeah. I guess where I want it. 
I just don't know. It's, go it's gone down so many times already. I don't even know if the fish is still on there. But we're going to leave it. We're going to wait another 10 minutes. 5, 10 minutes. That's exactly where I want it. You said you had two kids, right? Yeah, I got two kids. A, a daughter, a daughter Emma, and a son named Leo. He's very energetic. He's very, he loves animals, loves it. I, 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 I plan, I, like I asked also Eduardo and Daniel if I could bring him one time, you know, because he loves this kind of stuff. He loves seeing animals and coming out to nature and all that. And just, you know, just being out here. He, lo he loves, he loves like going to the park and stuff like that. He loves that kind of thing. And then my, my daughter Emma, she's, she's just like me. Very wild, you know. Uh, she's very like, she's built like me, very stocky. She's very uh, physical. Like my son, uh, he always he always begged us for a, a, a little brother, a little brother. I want a little brother. I want a little brother. You know, I mean, we couldn't. We, we ended up with a little girl, and now that now that she's born and she acts more, she acts like a little brother. Like she beats him up. Like she does all this stuff to him. He's like, no, I don't want. Like I don't want it no more. You know. He said before, he said, oh, I want a little brother, I want a little brother to play with. And now he has a daughter, um, uh, a sister to play with. And she's real, or she's real rough. She's real rough. Like, she, I'm, that's the way I am, too. Like, if you guys also, I'm, I'm very rough and stuff like that. I don't know why. Just That's the way we play. It's funny. Like, so seeing as I know a lot about construction, my, my wife always has, like, a... Like, every, 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 like every so often, like, a, a project will pop up that she saw on Pinterest. And like she, she tries to make me. Uh, well, she doesn't try. She no, does. She, she, she does. She, 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 she makes me uh, do something for her. Like she, the simplest things that she can turn into the hardest thing by, by, by alternating like one little thing. Like, but you know, it looks great. I mean, her ideas are, are probably the better ideas compared to mine. You know. Nah, yeah. So I got, I got a lot of honey do lists. I, that my wife got me ready to do all year long. It's, I just I take one uh, one week doing one little piece at a time, man. But which I which which I I don't I don't understand because when we first got a house, I was like, you know what? I brought I, I ran that idea like, hey, let's let's buy a a flipper, you know, like a you know a not so good house and just you know work. Uh, uh, my wife wanted to be an interior designer. Let's put it that way. She went before she went to school. She was, her thing was being an interior designer. So I was like, perfect. You know, I want to flip homes. You know, all this. So it would be a perfect matchup. You know, but I don't know. Somewhere along the way, she decided that's not what she wanted to do no more. So and I was like, man, the flipping would have been perfect because you could have, you know, done your vision, and I could have made it. And, you know, we could have just ended up flipping it. You know, instead of buying, you know, a new home and you know, paying outrageous prices for it, you know. Okay, just got a flipper. What is that? A little sand trout. A little sand trout. Look at the colors on it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like these, man. I really do like catching sand trout. Yeah, a little bitty one. They're just fun, man. They're just fun to catch. How many is that? That's two. Two? Yeah, it's just two. I just like catching them. You enjoying this weather? Yeah. It's, it's funny because the, the rain is on and off, on and off. and uh, But it's still so nice out here, you know? Like, it, it's just sprinkling, you know? So it doesn't really matter. What about the breeze? Uh, it's not enough of the breeze. I, I like I, I can't wait till it gets a little bit colder, but... It's, it's a day on the water, so that's all I care about. Actually, I think I can flip it. Oh, it's just a little sheep head. Oh. That's what it is. Yeah? That's a pretty fish. little sheep head. Oh my gosh. Oh. That's really nice. I guess it's a little, what is that? A sheep, I guess it's. Sheephead or black drum? Can you show me the side of it once you get yeah, it out? Hold on one second. Wait, 
Yeah. Little black drum, little baby black drum. All right. I like how he fought. That was fun. That's another little sand trout. Oh, I foul hooked him. So you foul hook him basically, see how he's hooked on the side? It's because I didn't hook him when he got the bait in his mouth. I caught him whenever he had already was around the bait. So they call it foul hook. Also say right here, look. Ah, oh, dang it, you saw that? Yeah, it was down for a minute and I missed it. Oh, I slept on it. That been... the bait? Oh, no, man. Damn it. Hey, try to get an angle. Huh? So, try to... Hey, what you feeding the fish? Huh? So, what you feeding the fish? Just... And you don't bait. the same bait as us. Same bait. They went over here. What is this, sand trout? Yeah, a little sand trout. Is it the same one or no? It's not the same one, bro. I mean, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think you're cheating. So you throw it in, one minute later it comes out. There you go, a little sand trout. All day. Have fun. There you go, I got one. There you go. One small one. <laughs> Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, finally. Ah. Finally got him. Let me get a poop over here. You have to grab a neck. Yeah, I just want uh, to try not get the hook on me. Feels good. Man. I got like right underneath the chip, underneath the. Look at that shark, look at that one tooth. See it? Is it good fun? <laughs> Felt great. Now I'm ready for the next one. Ready for the next one. Damn. Is it the. Huh? I'm back. I'm back, baby. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah. That little, little bitty, that little bitty drum. I like that fish a lot. It's really pretty. Yeah, it looks cool. Look at that little bitty one. They're fun, though. Fun to catch. Look how big the eyes are. Look how big the eyes are. Isn't that cool? Sand trout? Yeah, a little sand trout. There you go. Good day, huh? Yeah. I like that, man. I, I, my day's already made because I came out here. I like catching the little sand trout and stuff. I like catching anything. But later on, we're going to do a carne asada. We're going to cook up some fajitas and some sausage and some tortillas. And uh, that'll definitely make the day, too. No way. How long has it been since the last catch? Uh, about 20 seconds. But because, because, so I got this little Carolina rig on, okay? So what it is is I'm just using the live shrimp, but this little Carolina rig has a weight at the bottom. So when, if you imagine it in the water, it's sitting here. So it's only sitting that high above the, above the bottom of the floor of the, of the bay. 
So it holds that shrimp down there. And even though that shrimp is, uh, you know, live, it's putting it down there where the sand trout are. So that's what kind of the reason we're, we're able to get them. They're, they're, they're fishing at the top, which they could run into, you know, same thing because it's not that deep of water. It's just I can feel them really well um, on my little combo. Nah, it's a little hardhead. Yeah, so your shrimp already died, right? He's pretty much dead. He's dead already? Yeah, he's dead. So look, what we can do... look a little pink, like... Yeah, so look, what we'll do is we'll squeeze this head, yeah. like that. Squeeze the head. Take the hook off right there. So look, you see how big that shrimp is? Yeah. You got one piece, two piece, three piece, okay? You split it up. You split it up. So right here, about the second one back, you twist it and turn it like that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? And just, just kind of squeeze it. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this hook. Set it in the middle, yeah. You're gonna right put it right in the middle, like this. And hook it, and it's gonna come out the bottom right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually I need to go further. So, so the thing is, see how the hook's kind of hidden in there? Yeah, hidden so they don't see it. It's hidden. So when they hit this, they're not going to be able to take it off easy. Yeah. They're going to have to hit it and, and really take it. Mm -hmm. So all you do is when you throw it out there and you put that, just get your line to where you got some, you got, you, you let them take it a little bit. Yeah. Let them take it all the way down. Because the first time they take it, it's, they're not going to, they're just going to grab it and try to mess yeah. with it. Yeah. Let them fully take it and then you're going to have, but then now you got, on those two big pieces. shrimp, you got two other pieces, yeah, two other pieces. that you can kind of tear up. Right. Nope, sand trout. Man, it was shaking its head. I thought, I thought it was a little sand trout. Man, I, I, I uh, foul hooked him to, again. There you go. The thing about it is challenging the like. Yeah. Oh man, uh, if it was easy, yeah, we would be doing it. Yeah. All right, I think uh, so. I think this is the last sand trout I'm gonna catch for a while. I think it's time to start the carne asada, get the pit set up, and get the guys fed. So I think that's what we're gonna do. You hungry? I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. All right, so today we're doing uh, a carne asada. Carne asada is basically uh, a backyard barbecue, but you know we're out here fishing we got a nice little spot they actually got a barbecue pit here but we're gonna go ahead and uh we're gonna use our own pit that we brought because it's closer to the water so we're gonna do some fajitas and some sausage just keeping it simple but i think what we might do is uh we might start doing these little uh carne asadas as we fish if we ever catch something and we learn how to you know uh get really good at fishing and we can guarantee we're gonna have something to cook then maybe we won't buy stuff but for now we'll bring our own food and uh and cook it and we'll we'll call it a, a cooking catch cook and maybe catch something but today we're gonna catch some uh some uh fajitas simple tortillas and uh and some sausage we cook it on the little weber Good snack, good, uh, you know, maybe the maybe we start bringing more and more people, get a full blown carne asada going. It is, Bruce. Eduardo, look at yours. <laughs> Why are you lying? Why are you lying? You almost came out of your chair, bro. You know what it is. Eduardo, look at yours. I'm fast like lightning. So, what is a carne asada? Listen to you. What's it to me? Well, I mean, it's a traditional, you know, Mexican family gets together cookout. It would be considered a cookout in English. 
right? 24 the, pack mandatory. 24. Everybody shows up with at least a 24. At pack. least something. At, at least you, so, you never show up empty handed. Empty Gotta bring something. Something. And since all the all the all the people drink, all the family drinks, you gotta show up with a 24 pack. Yeah. Even if you don't drink, you gotta you gotta show but up with a 24 the pack. The most important part is the meat. You gotta have some good meat. You gotta make some tacos. It's all about you know having the family and your family and friends there and enjoying a uh an afternoon grilling out. The boys listening outside. to the tunes. Gotta have gotta outside. have some music. Yeah, the guys outside cooking while the women are inside getting preparing all the the cotton, the what do you say? What do you call it? Sides. Guacamole. Yeah, sides like rice, sides. beans. You know, usually the guys take care of the cooking out outside. Yeah. Just uh, another form of. It's getting, an. Getting, it's getting, it's getting really together. an excuse to be out there drinking. Getting together. With, day drinking yeah, all day. Getting together with your family, family and friends. Yeah, it's it's important in our you culture know, like, to get together with your family and like friends. You, you always see you always see it on the, on Facebook, like a lot of videos. Uh, he uh, he está invitado a la carne asada like oh he. Like basically saying like he's like family, like if you're saying like if it's not saying like if I'm saying hey you're invited it's like you're basically family. Yeah, it's like you invited a yeah. cookout. Yeah. What's your favorite memory that you guys had? Uh, family, yeah. like yeah. Just being with family. Like, honestly, I fun. Mean, my grandpa, yeah. you know, he was always the one that uh, he always did all that. My dad's not a big cook, you know. My grandpa's always always been the man of the pit, or like he's the pit master, you know. So I kind of like instilled that to me, you know. To, to be the guy who it's not even like that it's more like the person who it's a, it, it's a, the person who brings everyone together you know it's like that one person that's like oh I, hey come over to my hey, house also, I'm I'm also, when I also hey when I invite when I say hey, I'm having a cutter also is always invited like he I, my family you know obviously but I always invite him all the time even though he feels left out or not left out but you know how do you say you know, you don't even feel left out anymore, huh? He's like, you feel that at first he would always be like, nah, I don't want to go. Who's gonna be there? Oh, just my mom, like you know, my brother, sister, my mom, dad, my aunts, uncle. He's like, nah, I don't want to go. Like, bro, you're like my brother. Come on. So you only not, wanted me to go, so you weren't the only one drinking. <laughs> yeah, that was that it, too, baby. <laughs> I didn't want to be the only one drinking. Man. But yeah, now we just do it all the time. I mean, we used to do it all the time, honestly, huh? We used to even go to the park, huh? We did grill at the, the park. Sundays, we used to go to the park and to park. have a little, we used to go for bike rides. We'd have a little carne asada at the park after yeah. we did a bike ride. Yeah. It was a, it was fun. I don't know. It's just enjoying. And I think that's what Daniel wants to bring to this to this channel. You know, just yeah. we come out here, we fish, and then make you know memories. make make uh, make some food, talk, make friends. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing there's nothing like getting to know somebody over a nice meal. And that's our way of getting to know each other better, cooking out, making some carne asada. Like there's there's states in Mexico that it's a every week weekend thing. Every weekend it's a carne asada. They're just deciding whose house it's gonna be yeah. at and stuff. Yeah. What? Um. That's something that also gets lost here in America because people are running around with their busy schedule, don't have time for family, don't have time to reunite and be with friends. It's hard out here sometimes. Mm -hmm. you just, all you do is work, go home, sleep, work, go home, sleep. That's why it's really cool that we come out here, take some time fishing, have fun. Away from the everyday Away life, from, everyday yeah. stressful life. And I mean, it's peaceful out here. Yeah. It's peaceful. I mean, all we're hearing is what, just trucks going by. To me, there's nothing better than a carne asada when the temperature's 70 to 60 like outside winter time, winter with time. the boys. Oh, man. Oof. That's usually, nothing better. That's usually nothing how better. it went down, like during winter time. High school huh? chest. Cooler full of beer, cooler full of sodas for the for the family. The kids. The waters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I ain't gonna lie, man. That, that Coke I just had was ice cold. Man. That's yeah. the best. Like, like, it was good. It was like slushy ice cold. No. That's good. Get that cooler from the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Goodwill. From it's a good cooler. <laughs> it's a good Goodwill cooler. Dude. Got some kolaches. That cooler's from the 1700s. They don't make them like that no more, huh? Got the right Damn. That cooler was around when Moses was around. Yeah, Moses is good. <laughs> that cooler was around. Put some sausage on first. If we don't get like ten, look. if we don't get ten from all the 
Look, look, look. Oh, look, you look. got an ice pick. <laughs> look, it's got the little can opener. Damn, oh, we're vintage. definitely going to get some something from the rust. That's vintage. Where'd you get Classic. that? Where'd you get that? I got it at a swap meet. Right. I have a, a 67 Volvo, and, and I was looking for something that uh, kind of matched the patina. That's that's the that's not rust, it's patina. How much did you pay for that? Please uh, tell me you didn't pay more than five dollars. Forty bucks. <laughs> he told you to pay more than five dollars. Five dollars. <laughs> Classic. You can't get nothing like that. Only time does that. Only you know, time. Does it still hold up good? Yeah, still man, works? It's still, still holla? It's gonna outlast you and me. I <laughs> holla? See holla? I holla. What's that? Oh, that works. It works. Oh, I holla. What did you say? Holla. Holla. Holla? I holla. I holla? His dad, it's, his, it's his dad saying, like, whenever he's. Like, when, oh, like, so he's like, I holla. Like, it, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> it'll like, work. When, when something's a little messed up, you're like, I holla. It'll work. I'll cock it. What does he say? Cock it? Good caulking covers everything. Caulking covers everything. Shit. And caulking cover it all. I oh, man. My dad is a, uh, he got the best phrases. 